fucks. I love you, girl. I don't know what the fuck you done done with your face. You you could have aged gracefully, girl. Beautifully. Okay, but that 50 cent got up in your mind. See what happens when you lick on buttholes? have not already done so please remember to like share to facebook subscribe and visit uptopbeauty.com for this hilda hat we have them in black with the white flower as you see and also black with the black flower and it is adjustable and if you are not already a part of this book club please hit the patreon link below and or the join button here on the youtube and for a small monthly fee of five dollars you babies yes you can be privy to all the shenanigans before the youtube gets it if the YouTube gets it. Now, let's continue talking about Be My Baby by Ronnie Spector. Y'all, it's getting good, y'all. By the fall of 1963, our lives were turned upside down. All the things I'd ever dreamed about were finally coming true. We had appeared on Dick Clark's American Bandstand. Baby, that was a big deal. Because really? American Bandstand was like the white version of soul train and child whenever you had black stars on the american bandstand girl it was an event people from all over the world were calling to ask for interviews with us and best of all you couldn't turn on your radio without hearing be my baby i was in heaven my only complaint was that so many great things were happening so fast it was getting hard to appreciate all of them I wanted to slow down the clock so I could enjoy every single minute, but it doesn't work that way. My family was happy for us, of course. My grandmother didn't live to see the Ronettes make it, but my mother and all the aunts and uncles were full of pride for us. Child, let me tell you what happened. Ooh. Some of her family had decided what they were going to do was they were going to throw a cabaret. I don't know what y'all uh, call them in other places, but back home in the DMV, we call them cabaret, okay? And sometimes what happens is uh, you'll hire or the promoter of the cabaret will hire a band to be there to help entertain because basically a cabaret can either have a DJ there or a live band. The family decided to throw a cabaret and use the Ronettes as the only act. What she said was that the family thought that the Ronettes were going to be a big draw because it was the Ronettes. Okay? They rented the venue. They uh, let everybody know that the Ronettes was going to be there. Child, and wasn't nobody there outside of the family except for maybe three people. And... You know, I'm sure them people lost a lot of money. I never did get used to how my family changed after we made it big. It reminded me of how the kids in high school reacted to us after we started doing Murray the K's radio show. Except that now it was our own cousins, uncles, and aunts who were treating us like we were somehow different than they were. My dad finally saw the Ronettes in the fall of 1963. A few months after Be My Baby came out, we were on the bill at a rock and roll review in philadelphia and dad had a lot of relatives in that area so one night he came up from florida to surprise us we had no idea he was even there until estelle spotted him in the audience remember ronnie's mother put his ass out because he disappeared on the second month's rent called down into florida granny uh, hey, Granny, hi. You better come get your grandson because I'm getting ready to put his ass out. Those are my girls up there, he told anyone who listened. My two little girls. Ronnie said she promised to keep in touch with her dad, and she said she continued to at least see him once a year. I try to do that with my father. Too. One of the things that happens when you have a hit record is you start hearing from old friends you haven't talked to for years. 
Frankie Lyman is back, y'all. I'm telling y'all, if y'all ain't doing nothing, please watch that movie, Why Do Fools Fall in Love. Lorenz Tate was an excellent... Man, let me tell you something. That was Halle Berry's best role to me. I know you'd be like, but she got the Oscar for... What was that? Monster Ball? No. Why Do Fools Fall in Love, to me, was her best role because she was funny and she showed range. Oh, you know what else was good? Gothica. Gothica to me was her best movie. What was Halle Berry's best movie for you? Like I said, if y'all ain't doing nothing, please watch that movie. That shit is, is hilarious. When I tell you, Vivica Fox, I love you, girl. I don't know what the fuck you done done with your face. You you could have aged gracefully, girl. Beautifully. Okay, but that 50 cent dick got up in your mind. See what happens when you lick on buttholes? You, you, you start tripping. And you think you're supposed to stay 22 forever. No, girl. It was okay for you to age. One of the old friends who came calling after Be My Baby was Frankie Lyman. The boy who got me started in the first place. I hadn't seen Frankie in a long time. But I'd heard stories that he was still drinking. That he'd gotten into drugs. That he'd become a junkie. But I was home when he called our house and he... He sounded perfectly normal to me. Ronnie, he said, I'm so glad to hear about your record. And I want to come and congratulate you in person. Think about it, y'all. So that means in between the three women that he was gooping on Why Do Fools Fall In Love, he was trying to get at Ronnie Spector too. Ooh, he's a Libra. I still had a soft spot for Frankie. So I told him to come on over. My sister wasn't around that day, but my mother was in a house with a guy we called Duke. A neighborhood barber who mom used to date sometimes. When I told them Frankie was coming over, they agreed to hang around in the kitchen while he was there. My mother even helped me clean up the living room before Frankie showed up. I still had a big crush on him and I wanted to make a good impression. So I put some potato chips and dip on the table and my mom set up a little bar with a bottle of Canada dry ginger ale, a fifth of J&B scotch, and a set of her best drinking glasses. Ma, now you know that nigga got a reputation of being a damn junkie. When you Frankie came to the door a half hour later, he was wearing fresh pressed black pants and a button-down shirt with horizontal red blue and green stripes he was a very cool individual i took one look at him and thought god i still love him he walked in and we sat there on the couch talking over old times for about a half hour everything was really nice and then I made the mistake of offering him a drink. Thanks, Ronnie, he said, reaching for the J&B with one hand and grabbing one of my mom's tall glasses with the other. He filled the glass halfway to the top with straight scotch and drank it down like 7-Up. Then he poured himself another and another. I was amazed as I watched an entire fifth of J&B disappear in less than 25 minutes. And I didn't touch it myself because in those days, my mother would have killed me if I'd even had a drop. But she, but she offered it to, to, to the Frankie Lyman, the junkie Lyman. Mama, you know how to hold on to your vagina, but you don't know how to keep a drunk graper out your damn living room and off your daughter. I continue. As I watched him get drunker and drunker, I felt nothing but pity. Here was Frankie Lyman, my all-time idol, and he hadn't made a record in three years. He was washed up at 20. But what made it even sadder was that he couldn't stop talking about my voice. Pause. Before I go further and I, I forget this. Do you know when Frankie Lyman... And Zoila Taylor started dating. Frankie Lyman was 14 fucking years old. And she was 18. What kind of passion and love. He, uh, a Libra. But what kind of love and affection does a 14 year old boy have to offer? Zoila. Go. What in the Jesus girl. I said something fishy about this. Zoila way too experienced. To be with this kid. Then something said, nay, Google the, the, the birth dates. Oh, my God. How old was Zoila when she started messing with Frankie the Lyman? 14. You know, Ronnie, I really love the way you sing on your record, he slurred. I just sat there huddled in the corner of my mom's L-shaped couch. 
watching my childhood hero drink himself silly. And of course, once he started drinking, he couldn't keep his hands off me. He'd lean over, swing, and try to grab hold of my arms. I'd pull away, but he'd just wait a few seconds and then try again. After a while, I didn't see any point in trying to stop him. You're the one with the real talent, I said, trying to steer the subject back to him. I don't think I'll ever forget how you sang, Why Do Birds Sing So Gay? But Frankie was in no mood to talk about his career, so he kept going back to my singing. I love your record, Ronnie. He kept repeating. But every time he said it, the words came out sloppier than the time before. That vibrato kills me, he said. Where did you ever learn that? I couldn't believe my singing idol was asking me where I got my voice. And the funniest part is that I'm sure he used them same fucking lines on Zoila Taylor. And she fell for it. Rodney Spector ain't fall for it. But Zoila D. Where did you ever learn that? I couldn't believe my singing idol was asking me where I got my voice. From you, Frankie, I told him. I wouldn't even be a singer if it wasn't for you and your records. I was on my feet by now, practically shouting to get through to him. Or to, or to call your mama. Danger! Hazard! Help! I was on my feet by now, practically shouting to get through to him. It's all yours. The phrasing... The vibrato, everything I got, it all from you, Frankie, from you. But he wasn't listening because his mind was on that vagina, okay? that His mind was on that Ronnie Spector be my baby vagina. You don't give a shit about nothing you talking, girl. But he wouldn't listen. He just got up, shook his head, and then stumbled off to the bathroom. He came back a few minutes later, more obnoxious than ever. He walked right over and pressed me down against the couch. He didn't say a word, but he reached down and tried to pop the buttons off my shirt. I put a stop to that before he got to the second button. Mom! I called out loud enough to be heard in the kitchen. Duke! Frankie's leaving now. I couldn't take it anymore. I thought Frankie and I might have had a little romantic evening. Okay. I even fantasized that he and I might start up a regular girlfriend guy kind of thing. But all Frankie wanted was to climb on top of me and leave. And I couldn't do that. Duke finally walked in. Finally? What the Duke shit? Duke finally walked in. Took one look at Frankie straddling me on the couch and figured out what was going on instantly. Come on, man, he said, pulling Frankie gently to his feet. It's time for you to go home. Then with his hand on Frankie's shoulder, Duke calmly walked him to the front door. Just before he left, Frankie turned and stared back at me with this awful look on his face like he'd just been betrayed but couldn't figure out why. What's going on, Ronnie, he asked. Are we going to have another drink? He seemed so hurt and confused, but there was nothing I could do to help him. So long, Frankie. Duke told him, closing the door, there ain't nothing left to drink in there. And then Frankie was gone. I hated so much having to throw him out, and I felt bad about it for years. But what else could I do? I never saw him again. When I read in the papers a few years later that Frankie Lyman had died of a drug overdose at the age of 25, it didn't really surprise me. That boy was hungry for love, but when he didn't find it, in any regular places, he started to believe it didn't exist. So he turned to drinking and drugs as a way to ignore the pain. But the pain never did go away. Hold on, pause. He wasn't looking for love because he had bitches out there that loved him. It was something that one of the characters in Why Do Fools Fall in Love said. I don't know if it was Zoila's character or Layla Rashawn's character. I'm not sure. Okay, but they said that what he needed most was that admiration on stage. Like he loved the applause of the audience. That was his high, okay, which was bullshit because in the movie they showed a time where he ran on stage and then passed out from him being too high. His trouble okay. started long before he started singing because in the movie don't forget that he said that his father 
used to be him and his brother's arses. So, the three things that I believe led to the death of Frankie Lyman. Him witnessing his father's addiction as a child and the abuse that went along with it. Him gaining a successful career and losing it so quickly and the sign of the times because a lot of young people back then were using heroin like it was marijuana and this is what rick james was saying heroin was the it drug of that time okay just like now okay baby you not shooting dope but you on them perk 30s like a mother stone junkie stone cold junkie oh y'all and somebody i forgot who it was but somebody in the comments told me that the name of the movie that I told you about that scared me to death that I seen in Shaw Junior High. It's called Dead is Dead. Ooh, that shit scared me to death. Man, check it out on YouTube, y'all. Thank you for whoever told me uh, the name of that movie. I didn't understand any of it back then. I wouldn't figure out Frankie's problem until much, much later. And by then, it was too late to save him. I barely figured it out in time to save myself. Well, baby, it's not your responsibility. After Be My Baby went through the roof, Phil was hot to do a follow-up. He wrote Baby I Love You again with Ellie Greenwich and Jeff Barry. And in the fall of 1963, he called me in New York. We've got another hit for you. How soon can you be in California? I would have left that minute except for one thing. The Ronettes were leaving the next day to tour with Dick Clark and his caravan of stars. Now we know that's a big deal from reading all the Motown books. Don't go, Phil told me, as if a tour with Dick Clark was no big deal. But Phil, I tried to explain. This is Dick Clark. He needs us for this tour. So what, he said. And I could tell from his voice that he was getting more pissed by the second. I need you too. Hey.